Hey, hey, this is Dan Morris, the blog and Concentrated, and today we're doing another Biz Book Insight. Today, we're looking at a book called Hustle by our friend Neil Patel and, I need notes for this, Patrick Vlaskovitz and Jonas Koffler. I don't usually use notes, but I knew I was never going to remember those two last names. Vlaskovitz is a pretty cool name. So, I read Hustle because I thought, man, this, this is something our audience needs. And I'll tell you immediately, there is an inherent problem in the book. And that problem is, the people who need this book are likely not going to be reading it. I mean, this book is about getting out there and and going after your dreams, the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, taking the bull by the horns and really going after it and getting it. The problem is, the people that, I mean, I thought of 10 different people while I was reading it that I needed to send this to immediately and I can't, I could not envision those people picking up this book because they are they suffer what Neil calls or what the the book hustle calls the cycle of suck they are like stuck in this world that they they can't get they can't get out of they can't get to do their dreams they're kind of stuck in mediocrity and I thought man if I could if I could just get them this book, then they could hear the kinds of things that we talk about, but from a different person. I mean, you know, maybe that third person telling them would really like just get them fired up to do something. So, so these guys need your help first. That's the first and foremost thing, because we all know someone who is stuck in their job. They're just not enjoying it, and they're they have this thing that just holds them back. And you and I both know it's them that's holding themselves back. They need the book, so I think these guys need help. I think the target market of the book are people largely who need it, but people who probably aren't going to pick it up because they they don't have they don't <laughs> they haven't broken out and realized they need they need this kind of motivation. So to start off with, you know, at the end of this, we usually say whether or not you should read the book. For the first time, I'm telling you that you should buy the book and give it to a friend. That's the first first thing that we're going to say about it because those are the people that need the book. Um, he, he told a story about Seligman's dogs. Did you ever hear this story? Back in the 60s, they did, a, they did an experiment. Um, 24 dogs broke them into uh, three different groups. And this is mean, but the, the, you'll understand the point. So they shocked the first dogs, you know, like electric shock. But they trained the dogs that if the dogs just hit, you know, pressed against this button, that the shocks would stop. So the dogs immediately probably even hearing the sound of the machine turn on would hit the button and turn it off. Instant, you know? Like, this is how dogs work. The second group shocked the dogs, and the dogs knew that if they jumped over a half wall to the other side of the pen, it would be over. They would escape, and they would it would be over. So they immediately escaped. Now, the third set of dogs, they put them in a cage where there was no chance for escape or getting out. They just had to suffer the shocks. That's just horrible, isn't it? Horrible. So then they put all three sets of dogs into one big pen and they turn on the machine that shocks them and the dogs that, that know to press the button jump over a half wall where they see the button. The jobs that know the dogs that know that they just need to jump over the wall, they jumped over the wall. But the dogs that were, were trained, there's nothing they could do, they just sat there. Like all they had to do was jump over the wall. And that he called it learned helplessness. That is why a huge percentage of people who need this book are not going to buy it because they have this ingrained in them, this learned helplessness. The idea that they can't get out, that they're stuck. So as our first call to action with the book is I want you to buy one and I want you to send it to someone who needs it with a nice note. You know, just read the first chapter. Maybe you can get them to do that. Can you give me your thoughts on chapter two? Just something to get them in because they, they need this kind of motivation. Now, reading it from our level, from our audience, from the entrepreneurs, from the shakers, the movers, um, there's a lot in here that is going to help you break into the next realm of where you're trying to go. Whether you've been stuck writing blog posts and then you get a hundred you know, 100 new visitors to your site, so you write in the post, and you do a Facebook, and get another 100 visitors, and on a good day, you get 200, and you're in this you know, cycle, and you can't figure out how to how to just go totally awesome, um, great, 
you need you need this book too. There are parts of it that you're just gonna absolutely love. My favorite part, and the thing that we talk about all the time, is that you can't make progress without having some sort of return. And he says, all pain, you know, like that, without gain, all pain and then nothing but pain, this is what we have to avoid. So how do we build, I mean, how do we avoid burnout? How do we build into our systems uh, moments that encourage us, like like milestones? If I, if I can get here, I can check that off. I mean, those... That idea of, of checking things off, that idea of um, of making progress that you can see that keeps you moving. I, I love the discussion on, on that. In fact, uh, he called that the seal the deal, the third law of hustle. Um, and you will see with, uh, with Rachel Merton, when uh, Michael Hyatt uh, challenged her to finish the book, uh, to pick a date. Like she picked a date and went after that date. That date was public. Michael Hyatt had it on his calendar, and there was going to be a follow-up email that was going to come to her and ask her, like, are you halfway done? Are you two-thirds of the way done? Those were, like, that, that milestone, that public part of you're going to be able to see the results of your pain. We need to build those in. Loved that part. We, we definitely need to do that. Um, also really liked manufactured luck. I think that a lot of us look at other people, and we see... Um, we see all kinds of things that just happen to him. Like, wow, well, that guy got a book deal. Or that guy got a video deal. Or how did that guy start working for that client? Um, you know, and sometimes some people just crank it up to, to luck or who you're with or who you know. But, you know, a lot of it is indeed hustle. In fact, he recounts a, ta a story in the book about uh, Patrick and his son Shane walking along the banks of a creek looking for crawdads. You know, they're walking all the way down. They're looking intently into the water get all the way down to the end of the creek and his dad says uh patrick it looks like uh looks like or patrick was a dad shane it looks like there's not going to be any crawdads today so the little boy walks back a few yards jumps into the creek moves his feet all around and crawdads come out of everywhere out from under rocks and you know all of his stuff and he looks at his dad and says dad you just can't see him you got to jump in and move your feet around like that concept of manufactured luck it goes through all kinds of different stories, um, all kinds of different examples that would help help you in your your hustle and drive to achieve. Um, second rule of of hustle: keep your eyes open and your head up. I loved that. I loved his talk on looking for the hidden signs, the hidden currents. You know, even uh, you know when going across the ocean in a in a boat, there's the Gulf Stream. That Gulf Stream you can't see. But if you can find that hidden current, you can get across the ocean much faster. So that second law of hustle was eyes open and heads up. Look for the hidden signs. They're going to take you there faster. Um, and then probably the most important part for me, for you, is habits do not create identities. Or habits create identities. Identities don't create habits. So if you feel like you, you're not... A motivation you know you're not a hustler you're not the, the kind of person who does these kinds of things like that's because you're just not doing those kinds of things that's not the kind of person you are if you want to be that kind of person then get yourself some checklists get yourself an egg timer or a pomodoro timer and just start doing it create a new habit you now if you don't if you don't think you're a morning person start waking up mornings start working out become a morning person you can overcome any of that stuff so anyway, um, we're putting Hustle up on the, on the list of books that you probably need to buy and read and uh, digest. But as I said in the beginning, the most important thing I need you to do is buy the book and give it to a friend who needs it. Because they're probably not going to buy it themselves. Anyway, today we were talking about Hustle. comes out very shortly, if not t today in fact, maybe. Uh, I'd like you to check it out. Our friend Neil Patel, he needs our support help getting that book out there. And um, until next time, until we do another BizBook Insight, this is Dan Morris with Blogging Concentrated.